Well, over the last couple of days, and uh, increasing a lot today, uh, I, I've been asked to say something about GameStop, and I really didn't want to. Uh, it's, you know, it's really just momentum. That's all it is. Uh, and there are a number of names in, in which this is going on, names of companies that, that uh, were either uh, no growth, low growth, or negative growth companies. Uh, and it's not really that that you look for companies like that to get this done. It's just the characteristics you look for tend to be attached to companies like that. So I'll explain how how this whole thing gets started and why it's called momentum. Uh, because there is a circular flow that, that happens and you just got to get the ball rolling and, and you can get momentum. Uh, and I, I say I wasn't going to do this, but I was walking my dog this morning and across the street uh, there was a man and a woman talking rather loudly to each other as they were walking so I couldn't help but overhear because well they're talking and there's you know no other sound on the street going on she's angry at him and he's just angry overall and and he's trying to explain how it's not his fault that that you know uh it's manipulation so I kept listening I hear AMC who's going to go to movies AMC you know, again, I hear GameStop, a few things about that. I can't quite make out exactly what his argument is, but suddenly I'm hearing this. I'm going, look at this. It's right across the street. Here we go. You know, just as you're walking along, you're hearing it. It's everywhere. AMC, GameStop, AMC. Well, she's really angry at him. Uh, turns out he lost a pile of money this morning, uh, and he kept blaming the market is rigged. Uh, it's, it's manipulators that are doing this, and um, it's not. Uh, really, it's 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 a big feedback loop that's going on, and it's it's only manipulation if you don't understand what game you're playing. So imagine you sit down to play chess, and you think you're playing checkers, and you're moving like checkers, and someone else is moving uh, differently, and you think, well, you're cheating, you're manipulating the board here, you're cheating. Well, no, you're just playing the wrong game, uh, and um, this is a momentum game, and you have to know how it's played. And, you know, momentum, one of these, one of the important things about being successful in momentum is you want to be one of the first, uh, in the first group of people to leave the party. You do not, you do not stay till the end of the party. You, you want to get out of the party as, as fast as possible after you've made your money. Know when to walk away. Retail traders rarely know how to do that. The professionals know how. So let's, uh, let's look at how we would get this done. First thing we need is a target list. Uh, so we're going to do a stock screener uh, for uh, stocks with the highest short interest from, uh, you know, the highest to the lowest short interest. And maybe I'll cut it off at 50 or 60 stocks. Um, the smaller the float, the better the target is. So out of the 50, let's say that I do, I find 12 or 13 that have the, the smallest float. And, and I'll look at those. I also need liquid options. Uh, so hopefully those stocks have uh, uh, very liquid options. I'm going to look for near dated out of the money calls. A near dated meaning they'll expire in, in the next week or the next 10 days. Uh, and I'm going to look for out of the money calls on this one. Because uh, when I first show up, no one's really going to be expecting a $5 stock to be $18 in two weeks. So the options, the premiums are going to be cheap, 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 cheap. And the dealer on the other side is not going to be too concerned about this. Uh, and there's a dealer, if you're buying um, options on the exchange, uh, there are market makers for every security and they stand uh, willing uh, uh, to buy and sell at the bid and the ask. They're there to provide liquidity to the market and that's why they're a market maker. So if I'm buying call options, the dealer is short those calls. Now they have very low delta, but they're very, very near the money. So gamma is super, super sensitive and gamma is the rate of change of delta. Uh, when you're, you know, two, three days away from expiration and the stock is trading at the money, uh, Delta will move a lot, which means the dealer uh, who is that close, when you're that close to expiration, if you're hedging out a lot of short calls, you got to do a lot of buying and selling. Uh, and that's why, uh, you know, stocks tend to have these big volume fights right around strike prices because the dealer has to hedge out, has to continually Delta hedge all the way to the end. So I'm going to buy these call options. It's not going to cost me a lot of money to get this done. I can do a lot of volume. That's going to force the, uh, the dealer because the dealer is now short calls. The dealer has negative delta. The dealer has to get positive delta uh, to get to zero delta. And, and that usually means buying the shares, right? Uh, B-U-Y, not B-Y, buy the shares. Uh, this is uh, something we see at level two. 
by the way, and we see at level three. Um, and then I'm going to need a momentum crowd, uh, which are the day traders, uh, mostly retail traders. Uh, I need them to come in because I can't, I can't keep, I can't keep it going. Uh, momentum has its own power. So this is how this is going to work. I'm going to start. Uh, by buying a whole bunch of these calls out of the money uh, call options very near dated on stocks that you would look at and you'd say oh wow come on this is a dead stock really it's it's a no growth company or it's a shrinking company uh, and, and and is fading away I mean GameStop uh, you know last week I had a call from 2005 they wanted the retail store back you know it's it's you know, it doesn't take much to see that this is a, a no growth or low growth company. If you're buying into the story uh, um, and you're buying GameStop because you're buying into the story, my friend, you're playing the wrong game. You're trying to play a fundamental game where fundamentals don't exist. You're playing the wrong game and you're going to get hurt. So you need to straighten out. So I'm going to buy the calls. Uh, the dealer now has to buy shares to hedge those calls. So as long as I keep buying these calls... And it would be nice if I get a whole bunch of other people in on buying these calls as well. Well, Robin Hood traders are great for that, right? Because they're sheep. They're sheep. So you don't really have to do very much to get them to come along. They're sheep. And we start buying calls. That's going to force the dealer to buy shares. Well, the dealer has to buy the shares. It's going to push the price up. That begins the short squeeze. Uh, because all the people who are short on this stock, uh, there are strong hands all the way to weak hands. The weak hands will fold first. And when they fold, they have to buy to cover, which pushes the price up even more. This is the beautiful thing. Higher prices mean a higher delta on the stock because gamma, when you're that close to expiration, gamma moves very quickly, which changes delta very quickly, which means the dealer must buy more shares. And if the dealer buys more shares, it squeezes more shorts out of it. And if you squeeze more shorts out of it, the dealer has to buy more shares because the price keeps going up. If the price keeps going up, it squeezes more shorts out of it. So you got a short squeeze going on while you got a gamma squeeze going on. Well, the short squeeze and, and the price going up attracts the momentum crowd. The momentum crowd starts with their online chatter because they got to get a lot of people in on it. They want a lot of eyeballs on this thing because they want a lot of volume coming in very, very quickly to kill the, to kill the shorts and to kill the dealer. Uh, this pushes the prices up, which then uh, increases online chatter, which attracts more momentum crowds. So you got a circular flow going on in here. That drives prices up. The dealer must continually buy shares to hedge, which squeezes more of the shorts, which attracts more of the momentum crowd, which forces the dealer to gamma hedge even more, or sorry, delta hedge even more, which squeezes more. And this is where you got to get to. There's the circle. Notice that I'm out over here. I don't even get involved over here. I made my money over here. I'm done. I walk away. Uh, this is all just retail uh, trade going on. Uh, the dealer has to do what the dealer has to do. The shorts are going to get squeezed. Uh, some people here will make money. A very small handful of people, 5 to 10% of people there will make money and they will leave. They will know when to leave. Uh, because this is not a party you want to stay at. This is not a party you want to stay all the way to the end. The winners are the ones who leave first. The retail crowd, the ones with five, six, seven months of experience behind them. And of course, they know everything with five, six, seven months experience. They got it all figured out. They'd be making money. They're buying on every dip. They'll continue to buy on every dip until the last dip. They'll continue to buy right up until the last dip. And they'll make their bets bigger and bigger and bigger because they're making easy money. And they will give it all back and lose even more than they put in because these are highly volatile plays, you'll get knocked out faster than you can imagine. The pros are playing with very tight stops, very tight stops, and they're willing to lose eight, nine, ten times in a row before they have a good run, and they get out. This, right here, this circle, this circle is what's going on with GameStop right now. Uh, the, once the ball is rolling, momentum just keeps going, and momentum can last for weeks. Uh, GameStop uh, was at 350, uh, you know, 500, 600, 700, sure. There is no limit to rationality in momentum. It's a matter of when it's going to end. And it usually starts to end when the dealers start saying, you know what, that's enough with the options. And they widen their, their bid and ask spreads and they inflate the premiums to the point where it's not even worth buying the options anymore. This morning at uh, uh, 350, at the 360 on GameStop, 
I said, I'm going to buy the $50 puts because I know this is going to end. I know this is going to end. I've seen momentum before. I played it before, before uh, in, in 2005, 2006. There was a, a newspaper uh, called IBD, Investors Business Daily. And they used to publish uh, on Friday at 630, it would come out the top 100, the IBD top 100. And the number one stock on Monday morning would pop and would run for weeks. I mean, run. So everybody wanted to know what the number one stock was so that you could be in it on Monday morning and just watch it run. And that was momentum. And it was typically a low float stock. The lower the float, the better. It was typically a short interest involved. And um, sometimes there were options, sometimes there were not. Uh, and it usually got, you could tell that momentum was getting near the end where you couldn't get a short. Your broker just said, no more shorts. We're not doing any of this stuff anymore. Uh, and uh, you could not buy any of this stuff on margin anymore. You needed full cash. And if there were options, it got to the point where even if you did buy a put, it wasn't worth it. I tried to buy the $50 puts. You know how much they were? 26 to 30 bucks which means the stock had to get to under 20 bucks. Well, it was a $20 stock to begin with. In other words, they're not leaving, the dealer's not leaving a single penny on the table. They're not taking a single penny of chance, period. You want to buy a $50 put? Fine, it's 30 bucks because I think it's going to 20. I'm not going to, I'm not going to lose a single penny on this. So now it's not even worth buying the options. So it's a matter of, well, how long does this circle continue? Once this circle breaks, that's it. Uh, so, you know, this is a pool that you're playing in, all right? This is, this, is, this is not an investment. Don't buy into the story that, oh, everyone's going to play games. There's the console upgrade is coming. There'll be new games. People will flock. No, no, no. It's over. There is no story here. There's no story. It's not a fundamental play. This is momentum. This is a pool full of sharks and piranhas. You do not swim in those pools. You jump in and you jump out. And you check your body. Okay, I got everything on me. Maybe I'll jump in and jump out again. But you jump in and you jump out. That's it. You don't swim in those pools. Uh, so hopefully that helps you understand what is going on. Um, the big takeaways here are don't buy into the story. Don't buy a bunch of shares and turn off your system and say, oh, in a month, I'm going to be really rich. No, in a month, you're going to be broke. In 10 minutes, you'll be broke. All right. This is, this is a momentum play that has nothing to do with the fundamentals of the company. This is a different game being played altogether. Okay. Um, and that's it. Hopefully, that gives you a little bit uh, more insight into what's going on. Uh, with these names that should be forgotten, you know, Nokia, BlackBerry, uh, AMC, GameStop. I shouldn't say forgotten, but I mean that, that if, you were, if you were thinking about building a growth portfolio, you certainly wouldn't be including those names. Even if you were building a value portfolio, you would be saying, well, wait a minute, these are not value stocks, these are value traps. I mean, if you look at uh, uh, GameStop's revenues and growth over the last five years, it's been consistently going down. Uh, and if there was no, uh, 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 you know, pandemic relief, if there was no money being supplied by the government, most of these businesses uh, aren't surviving. Don't, don't listen to the story and say, that's a good story. I'm going to buy this stock. There is no story. The story has been left way, way, way far behind. Okay, that's it.